Hello everyone. So I'm an architect, but usually when architects are invited on stage, there's a huge anticipation that we will be talking about smart cities, sustainability, 3, 3D printing, fabrication technologies, etc. But then I'm not going to be talking about any of that. Instead, I'm a speculative architect who works in the intersection of architecture, cinematics, and uh, video games. And in my case, I construct scenarios that work with all these technological and digital paradigms, but at the background. So the story becomes the foreground and the technology becomes the background in my case. So as a child, this was back in the 90s, for every birthday or every occasion, I used to get a set, a set of Lego blocks as a gift from my relatives and neighbors, etc. And I used to wonder why. Over time, I realized I had this propensity to create endless iterations. Something like these. So these iterations, over a period of time, I started categorizing them, cataloging them, and I realized there's an emergence of a character. So it's not some uh, mindless creation of a robot or a building, but I had a specific character that emerges from each time. And using these characters, I started curating stories. And these stories expanded into what I would call today as my fictions. And fictions that came through remixed realities. <coughs> so fictions and remixing is my prime uh, interest for today. And I have a part of my research, it, it's with my curiosity towards human anthropology and understanding of local cultures and how they all relate and work with the advent of the digital. So we see so many convergences and overlaps and it, it all starts interacting or establishing networks with the digital. I start deducing these patterns and to ex explain this for an example, I will tell you this now. So what you see here, this basically is a music map. <laughs> and this music map, it's by some website called musicmap.info. So they have uh, categorized the music as per the genres that are available on the internet right now. And these are the main genres. So back in the day, in 80s and 90s, that was a moment when you can actually categorize or understand that this belongs to a specific genre. You know, this is a rock music, this is pop, or this is hip hop, or R&B, etc. So that was the case back then. But now, let's take a closer look. So when we take a closer look, I know it's pretty complex. It's like an algorithm with so many nested relationships. And if we go even closer, there's more complexity added to it. So now we live in a moment. Can anybody like touch your, cross your heart and say, you can define a music or a piece of music and what genre it falls into today? I think not. Because it's today we live in the time of remixability that so much of all these, uh, the past content is remixed and overlapped and it's made into reinvented news. So each artist and each album, they keep reinventing themselves to fit to the trends or the generations. So that is the case, how the overlaps and intersections work too. And to substantiate that, Frederick Jameson, a cultural postmodernist critique, he made the statement that culture is no longer trying to make anything new. It's rather looking at the, pa at the past media archive and they're trying to remix and rebuild on it. To this aspect, Len Manowich, another researcher, he also states that 
reworking, recombining, analyzing of past cultural aspects or artifacts creates new cultures. That is the emergence of a new culture. And this is the project, the first project that I'm going to show you today. And due to the time and our uh, deep knitted relationships with technology, our ideals or even the way we live, it's intertwined with the digital. So such is a scenario of a near future landscape where we are going to look at the life of a lady who had a bad day at work. Just keep looking at the visuals as I run through. It may not make sense completely at the start, but as we go on, it will start making sense. So this is a room, living room of a lady, and she is having an augmented meeting with her um, hierarchy, and she has a bad day because something went wrong. And all this was being monitored by a sentient drone or an intelligent AI-based uh, drone that was like a partner for every human in the near future. So this drone's only responsibility is to balance the mind state or control, stabilize the human's mindset. Since because of a bad mood, she starts walking outside the house. She's taking a walk and drone is still trying to notice it and trying to patch things up while she starts deconstructing and segregating and dis disrupting her environment. So there, there is this moment of confrontation between the drone and the lady and it extends to a level where she tries to break free from the clutches and jump off. So all these things that we see, the imagery, the depiction, it's a mind construct. So this is like a visualization or a, a way that we try to interpret architecture in the near future scenario. That's seen through the mind of a drone. To add to this, to continue, Bernard Shumi, a famous French architect, he quoted that form follows fiction. I repeat, form follows the cultural fictions and the contextual narratives around it. So a form is a very cultural artifact. Okay, now let's take a look back in history and how, on how we consumed fictions. Like what are the kind of different medias that we use to consume fictions? So to start with, we used to consume it from literature, that's through books and manuscripts, etc. And then we have paintings, and now that moved into the domain of moving images, that is the films or cinema. And then in the past recent uh, two decades, we have the era of video games that try to attempt to narrate stories of cultural, different cultural fictions. And now, what's the status right now? So this gives rise to the advent of virtual and augmented reality. I'm not going to go into the details as most of us know what they technologically do. But then long story short, I'm going to tell you what it does. Virtual reality is basically a stripped of reality or a fiction that is constructed without any relationship to the real world. While the augmented reality is a construct that works with digital objects overlaid in the real world. So this is like a basic understanding. And we thought we could take this augmented reality paradigm further, and, and of course virtual too. And what we termed or what came out of it is experiential and interactive fictions. So now, from now on, we don't really watch or consume media like a third person but then you can be a part of the story, you can interact the story with the story and you can disrupt or change the story. That is the domain that we have entered into. Now, I'm going to show you another project, Focus. That's the title of the project, Focus. Focus, live, learn, work and play. LLWP as I've shortened it. 
It's basically an augmented reality app that can be accessed through your retina. And the city is layered with multiple digital layers, etc. So this is a glimpse of how that inter interface can be. And this is accessible through your eye. So you don't have the need for phones anymore. And as we all know, we are confronted with so much of social media content and other things. And then he's still trying to navigate through his way, like through his journey. So the idea of classrooms is no longer confined to the four walls, but it expands and the urban fabric becomes the classroom, the large classroom. So what happens here is, it's a reward-based learning system where you start your day, you get each tasks for the day, and as you complete them, you basically are always on the move. You probably are working, that's fine. You can continuously keep moving, and upon your completion of each task, you get a new unlock of a next task. So that way, you get an increment and then you get a reward for each self-completions. And since we live in a time, again, with so much digital distractions, as I might call it that, or spam, unnecessary advertisements, pop-ups, notifications, etc. So this Focus app, what it allows you to do is, it controls or eliminates all this kind of content and it lets you focus on what you want to do. So, but it comes with a reward. I mean, it comes with some in, uh, points. So you have to keep earning the points to focus on what you actually want to do. So even to be able to stay undistracted becomes a tasking thing in the future. So this is a glimpse of the scenario or the city of how it could potentially be when this kind of a system comes into play. So focus lets you have seamless living, learning, working, and playing services in the future. Next. Now as we see, there's this whole idea or the emergence of gamification that emerges, that comes out of this kind of a project. So we, we are at this uh, sort of another convergence where since because of interactive and experiential capabilities of technology, we can actually start converging the idea of education and entertainment. So there's a new emergence of a term called edutainment. So even uh, our general education can be start made in, uh, being made in a much more interactive way that I think nobody will feel that they are actually sitting and studying. Everything's going to start being so dynamic. So this is a statement that I'd like to share. The role of 21st century architects and designers is not only about constructing things, but you guys can, are capable of constructing realities. This is another project that I want to share. And again, I'm going to go back to the idea of digital distractions. This is also a part of my ongoing research. So where I'm working with a video game based ecosystem. Imagine a video game that constantly works and it churns out characters and basically they are a set of digitally intelligent objects and it's like a sort of a mining and it churns out characters and all these characters they leak into the augmented city. Again we are talking about a paradigm where you have an augmented retinal lens through which you see the world and you are going to see a lot of blocking of intelligent objects, some weird objects that take over your city and how would you react to it? Th these objects, they start associating themselves with familiar objects or users like you go on a street walk and you see something like this associated with a trash can or the bus shelter is evolved into something else like this. Oftentimes, we think maybe this can steer towards the direction of being very dystopian or, yeah, definitely it's not utopian. But then, you have to also understand, we work in a paradigm where it's not just these extremes. There's nothing about 
a totally an utopian or a totally dystopian way. I think there are so many things in between. I think that's where there's a new emergence or a new set of interests that can come out. And that's what I'm interested in. I would say, damn utopias. Life is better than utopia. That's a quote by Lewis Mumford. At the end of the day, everyone has to realize there is no one solution that can fit all. But then, when you try, you can always throw a stone, and that stone can create ripples. It can or cannot. One such stone that we threw into the random near future is uh, to address the housing shortage in the futuristic India. So what we did is again a very uh, different way. So we took the infrastructure of data centers of the future. Basically, through the digital consumption that we have, there is so much overload and so much overload of servers, and we definitely are going to have huge unusable infrastructures of data centers in the near future. And this not just ends with that, it creates an insane amount of digital dump. You wouldn't believe India is the fifth larger producer of e-waste in the world. <coughs> so e-waste could actually become a building material in the near future. They are already starting to work and researching on it. So using this e-waste and an inter intelligence that thrives on a data center, we proposed a construction system. And so this is a, a glimpse of our proposal. And this is to house the migrants of the near future. And the migrants are from different cultures. So you see that sort of blend of different architecture that coalesce and come to coexist together. This could be certainly a, an utopian concept. This is our small attempt on how we could bring different cultures together. And I'd like to quote Silicon Cultures an intelligent social hybrid community in Mumbai. So with that, I'd like to score, fiction is an impetus of our times. It's like a driving force that can propel you to go forward. It's like an accelerator that can generate new ideas and potentially bring in new things into the world. Through this new digital lens, we can certainly create new possibilities that will give us a new way of thinking and the finest of which we can make them as certain it is. Thank you.